Now, in addition to stitching multiple tables together, you can also stitch a table to itself. But to do that, you need a little trick. And uh, let's start with um, the names database again. We'll continue with that. But this time what we want to do is, let's say we want to find for each year the total number of both male and female babies that had a particular name. So for example, I want to know just not just the number of babies named Mark in 1962 who were male, but also the number of babies named Mark in 1962 who were female. Now to do that, what I want to do is basically stitch all of this stuff together with all of this stuff where the year matches, the name matches, but the gender does not match. So basically two copies of this information, but one where the gender is male and one where the gender is female. So I'm basically matching the table by itself. Now I could do that basically by joining all of this stuff together twice and then joining both parts together. It starts to get a little complicated. So I'm going to take a simpler version first and then we'll do the full-blown um, gory details um, version. So um, for the simple version I'm going to start with the all data view. So let's select star top 50 star from all data because those are basically this pre-joined here. So here's the pre-joined information. Um, has one copy of each of the IDs. There's a um, name counts ID, a name ID, your gender total ID, but then I've just dropped the duplicate columns that had the same values. So what I want to do is I want to join all data to itself from all data, join all data on and then what do I want to match? So I want to match either the name or the name ID. Doesn't matter um, because the way the table is set up, each name ID is going to be one to one with each name. Um, so I want to match the name in both both sides of the join. And I also want to match the year in both sides of the join. But I only want the ones where the first gender doesn't match the second gender. So it's going to end up with female in one, male in the other. And in fact, I should probably just say the first gender is male and the second gender is female. But I have a little problem. So let's start with this. So I, uh, so I want to say on, and let's go ahead and do the first part. So um, name ID equal name ID. Okay, so that's a problem, right? Because um, SQL doesn't know whether I want this uh, name ID from the left side or the name ID from the right side. Now you can put a table name here. You can say all data dot name ID to clarify, but they're both named all data. And so that doesn't really help me. Um, so the trick here is you can add an alias for the table anytime you refer to it in this join. So I can say all data as, let's just say AD1, all data as AD2, and then everywhere in the query when I want to refer to the first all data table, I use the alias AD1 instead, and everywhere where I want to refer to the second one, I use AD2 instead. So now I can write AD1 dot, to specify the name ID column inside of the AD1 table, AD2 dot for name ID inside of the second column. So that joins all data to itself where both name IDs match. And then I can also add and AD1 dot year equal ad2 dot here and I'm going to tab this over and then I'm going to match and ad1 dot gender equal male and 
ad two dot gender equals female. So let's take a look at what we get now. And so we see this half, that, that one through um, that right there, that's the all data from AD1 where gender is male for Mary in it's the 1915. This side over here, that's all data two from 1915 name Mary, where gender is female. And so I can pull out ad1.name, which is going to be the same as ad2.name, and uh, ad1.year, which is going to be the same as ad2.year, and then I'm going to pull out ad1.gender and ad1. Uh, what do I want? Name count. And ad2.gender and ad2.name count. And this is actually always going to be male and this is always going to be female. So I'm going to cut those out and then to distinguish that this is the male name count and this is the female name count I'm going to alias the column so as male name count and as female name count so let's go ahead and run this query And it works. So I see the name Mary in 1915, there were 159 male babies and 58,000 female babies. So it's actually certain faiths it's common to name male babies Mary. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the name Mark. So I'm going to let me go ahead and put a go here. And I'm going to copy this query. And I'm going to add a where clause. Like so. And then let's go ahead and order by. So this ASC ascending is optional since it's already going to be ascending order by default. I don't need to put that in, but I haven't used it in any of these videos up till now. So there it is. So what this is, is a uh, mark year by year along with male name count and female name count. You'll see for male, it actually peaks Somewhere right around 1970, 71, yeah, 70, 69. Um, and there's a little bump in the mid 60s. Um, and uh, for females, it roughly follows the same distribution, but uh, just a, many fewer babies named Mark who are female. Um, but then here's an interesting question. So what happened to years before 1946 and what happened in 1947 and so on? Does that mean that there were no babies named Mark in 1947? Well, for the answer to that question and many more, tune into the next video.